Hey what's up guys welcome to another video in which we are going to learn about java buffered input stream class with the help of examples so guys the buffered input stream class of the java io package is used with other input streams to read the data more efficiently basically the data over here is read in bytes and it is more efficient in order to use the buffered input stream if you want to read any content of the file into the program now let us check the working of the buffered input stream the buffered input stream maintains an internal buffer of 8192 bytes so guys basically it is having the buffer of 8192 bytes in which the data is stored as a buffer now during the read operation in buffered input stream a chunk of bytes is read from the disk and stored in the internal buffer so basically it reduces the operation of reading from the disk and it stores some data temporarily in an internal buffer and from the internal buffer bytes are read individually so in this way the number of communication to the disk is reduced that's because we are using the internal buffer which is of the size 8192 bytes over here now guys this is why the reading of bytes is faster using the buffered input stream compared to the other input streams that we have seen previously now guys let us check this with the help of examples again we will see the methods of buffered input streams such as read available method and close method as well so let us move to eclipse id over here and in order to initialize the buffered input stream class we use the buffered input stream class over here and we define the object of the buffered input stream so let's say we have bis as the buffered input stream object over here equal to new buffered input stream so as you can see it is having two constructors over here the very first constructor it is taking the input stream as the parameter so we are going to provide the input stream as the parameter now which input stream we need to provide we can provide any input stream so over here in this example i will provide file input stream as the parameter to this buffered input stream in which we have to provide the path of the file now guys what will be the path of the file as we have seen previously we already have a test file over here as you can see this is the test file and this is the content that is this is a test line in a test file and this is another test line so both these lines we are going to read with the help of buffered input stream so i'm going to use this directory path over here i'll just copy and i'll paste this in the java code over here followed by double backslash characters and then the name of the file that is test file over here dot txt that is the extension so guys we have provided the name of the file as well now we can easily read the content of this file since we have used the bis as the object we have to use this object in order to read the content of the file we can use the read method that we have seen so guys previously we had seen that we can use the read method along with the array of bytes but this time we are going to use this read method which is going to read a single byte at a time from the input stream so over here i will provide bis dot read now this read that is the first method it is returning an integer so that integer we have to take in a particular variable so what i will do is i will initialize this integer that is i over here which is going to receive this integer that is being returned by this method that is read now this integer that is i it is having the integer representation of one character that is of the t now what we will do is i will print the content of this i over here right now so we have the system dot out dot print statement over here and i can say first character of file and then colon and then we can have i over here now guys this is going to have the integer representation let us confirm this i'll just save this file and try running this code now so as you can see first character of file it is 84 so this is having the integer representation i want the character representation of this so we can easily convert it to character by having the prefix that is char over here inside the open and close brackets in this way so as you can see before this i we have provided char that is the data type within open and close brackets now let me just save this file and try running this code now so as you can see t is getting displayed and that is the first character of this file that is t and in this way we can easily read the characters from the file now guys let us say i want to print all the characters so what we will have to do is we will have to go in a while loop so over here i will change this content that is file content is colon and then i will remove this part as well 
So what we will do is we will go in a while loop. We have to check whether the i's value is not equal to minus one or not. So we provide i not equal to we put minus one. So guys, basically when it is not equal to minus one, that means there is some character that is found by the read method over here. And that character is being given to the I. But in case at the end of the file, when the content or when the control flow goes to the end of the file and there is no other character to be read, then it returns minus one. And we have to come out of the loop once we reach the end of the file. So over here inside the while loop, what we will do is we will simply print the content of the I. So we have print a statement over here and I'm going to say I but before that I want to print the characters. So I am prefixing it with the char data type over here and then after that what I will do is I will simply copy and paste this line of code so that I can read the next byte that means the next character which is H and then similarly using the while loop I will read all the characters one by one at a time until I reach the end of the file over here and the control flow will come out of the loop once it finds minus one as the value of I over here. So guys let me just save this file and try running this code now. So as you can see file content is one by one all the values are being read from the file and it is being displayed over here. This is a test line in a test file and then if I scroll on right this is another test line and at the end of the file over here after this line this is another test line it encounters minus one over here as the i's value and it comes out of the loop. So guys in this way you can easily use the buffered input stream as well which is one of the efficient ways in order to read the data. Guys after this it is very important that we close this connection. So by using this object that is bis followed by dot we have something called as close method which is going to close this stream that is buffered input stream that we have used in order to read the file. Guys apart from this there are many other methods that you can use using this buffered input stream object. So when you use bis followed by dot we have many other methods such as mark and then we also have read into the array of bytes. We also have the available method which checks how many more bytes are present to be read by the buffered input stream. So guys you can practice on your own so that on different inputs you get different output. Please make sure that you like this video so that it reaches to more people and subscribe to this channel so that you get the notifications on upcoming videos as well. The next video that we are going to talk about is Java buffered output stream class with the help of examples. So stay tuned.